Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said visit the graves as they will remind you of the afterlife so the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to visit the graves. And the ziyara mashroor, the legislated visiting of the graves, is for to be reminded <coughs> of death. To be reminded of death. And that is because it's a place where we all are destined to go. And all of us will become one of those inhabitants of the grave. And in the graves, the Habatifillah will be asked certain questions. As the Messenger وسلم, said, will be asked, من ربك ما دينك ومن نبيك will be asked who is your lord who is your prophet and what is your religion and the scholars mention although this is a question that should be we would think is easy, it's from the, the, the simple questions for every Muslim. However, if you did not do deeds in this life, reminding you of that, you will find difficulty in the afterlife regarding the affair, regarding the question of the grave. And at that point, you will find that either you will be the people of Na'im, the people who will have comfort in the grave, or the people who will have torment in the grave, Adab al-Qabr. And since this is the gateway to the hereafter, you know, you're finished now. There's no more deeds that you can do. You know, your family is gone. Your loved ones are gone. Your wealth is gone. Your material items gone. Everything that comforted you in this life is now gone. And now you are alone in the grave. Being questioned by Malaika. So since this is the affair of the afterlife, all of these things are things that the Prophet والسلام, wanted us to contemplate. To reflect upon, reflect upon death, reflect upon the life of the grave. Why? Because these things can help you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these things <coughs> help you to remember the fact that you're going to be held accountable for what you did in this life. And this affair will help you if you're cognizant to be more cognizant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fear of Allah azza wa jal to adhere to his commandments and avoid his prohibitions so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reminded us because it's a meeting place where we all will go he re he, he reminded us to remind ourselves by reflecting on death. If we reflect upon death, Ahabatifillah, la shak there are fawa'id as well. No doubt that there are immense benefits for us. Why? Why would that be? For one, it teaches us not to indulge and, 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 and connect our hearts to all the materialism which is so destructive nowadays, even to a greater extent than in, in past times. 
that we don't attach ourselves to material items and gains thinking that that is where success lies success lies in how many instagram likes you get success lies in how many youtube video shares you you were a part of success lies in how much wealth and how how your new adidas or jordans or whatever <clears throat> or how well your makeup is how many sponsors you got that that is not true success ahabatifillah that is not true success that by reflecting on death, it puts it in perspective. It also can help protect you from some of the mental illness that is a product of that materialism. Because the person who's concerned about death, then they're not so attached to the trappings of life, the distractions of life. And therefore, there's a lot of stress relieved by not having to keep up with others not having to search out and seek the pleasure of others so in fact it can be a means of dealing with stress it can be a way a, a, a form of treatment for certain aspects of if you want to say mental illness but I wouldn't say quite mental illness but those sociopathic behaviors that are negative, that bring no khayr. So the more you reflect, and especially as a young person, or really as a, in any age, but the young people, because if they can get a hold of this now in their life and get a grip on the true reality now, then this, gives them an upper hand in their life, their whole life. They can focus on the important things, the important matter, matters in this life. They can focus on their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realize that that's the most important thing. It's not about attaining a new car and to have the nicest new car and, and the car that everyone's going to get the most looks and the car that you can take pictures and put it on Instagram. But that's not, there's really nothing in there because the people will leave you. When your car breaks down, they won't be there. They may have liked and enjoyed how handsome you were, how lovely your car is, how it's sitting on things. But when it breaks down, they're not going to be the first one to, or even the last one, or anyone. No one is going to help you repair that car. No one is going to help you get back on track if you deal with the hardships in life. So reflecting on death, and that's why simplicity and poverty are means to help people reflect on death and to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They can be further or they can be closer. And something, a real scenario that happened just yesterday as we were shopping, a brother that I've known for many years who since he became Muslim, I remember when he became Muslim, has had nothing but difficulty in his life he didn't have necessary high positions prior to Islam but he sacrificed but he was destroyed partially by a impious woman who did one of the most evil and wickedest of crimes and he has been ever since I have known him has been in major really in a probably in a constant state of various forms of homelessness and difficulty but he is working and I ran into him and he was working and we hadn't seen each other in 10 15 years I don't know some long period of time and I saw him we embraced and he was in the struggle as usual but he was working I was just glad to see him working and when we ran into him he was carrying his sajada in at his workplace, a busy department store. He was carrying his sajada. He had just come from the salat in his workplace, meaning he kept he keeps the salat. Perhaps maybe he's homeless now. I don't know, but he still was praying to Allah Azza wa Jal. Another story that I recall 
one of the last times I went to Ethiopia, I'll never forget, walking on the street, it was after Maghrib, I think. Well, it was definitely night, so it was after Maghrib. And I had some food donations that I was gonna give out. And I saw this brother, didn't know he was a brother initially, but I, as I came up close to him on the busy street of Addis Ababa, in after a, after a rain, with very you know he had clothes you know you know he was in a distressed state you know he was praying to Eliza with gel on the street that moved me so immensely because he could have been like so many people who have things there in Addis Ababa and otherwise who don't even pray but this man kept his covenant with Eliza with gel he kept his ah, with Allah Tabarak wa Taala. He was praying to Eliza Wajel and he was in struggle and strife, homeless, in a cold place like Addis Ababa where you're not going to get any help unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you help. You won't get anything. It's not like a, a welfare system that we may have in the West to at least perhaps give you some sort of support. Nor is it the strong economy where you're going to necessarily earn an easy living. But this man was praying to Eliza with gel. He was still content, begging his Lord. And this moved me. And so Ahabatafillah, not getting caught up in the dunya, reminding yourself of death often, not just when you are, <laughs> you see someone dying that you love or you're sick and dying, but all times strive your best to remind yourself and go visit the graves and, and and visit the sick and those people who are dying those kind of things will help you be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will help you to be reminded of the hereafter and your duty to Allah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil to bless us with the class with the that Bless us to be of those who remember him often. And may Allah forgive us of our many, many sins and shortcomings. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.